As a woodworker, I take a lot of pride in being able to make the furniture in our house. When I got started in woodworking, I was excited by the possibilities. Imagine living in a home where I've made every single piece of furniture. But the reality is, that's a little too ambitious. To realize that dream takes decades and a lot of money. Sometimes we'll buy a piece of furniture thinking it will someday be replaced with something I make. And sometimes I just don't have the desire to build it. And with that comes a lot of guilt. If you have ever felt the shame like I have, you've clicked on the right video. We have a problem. Our kitchen is very small with almost no counter space left to prepare meals. The goal is to one day do a complete remodel, but now is not the time. The thought is we have the space available in our back entryway where a washer and dryer used to be. We want to take this space and add a kitchen counter and cabinets for all of our coffee and beverage making. At first, I was planning on making all of it. I've built cabinets in the past, and to be honest with you, I just don't enjoy it. Lately, I've been trying to refocus on making things I'm excited about. So we had some custom cabinets built from a place called cabinets.com, and I would install them myself, and there wouldn't be a video. But the cabinets don't come with a countertop, and we want butcher block. So I'm buying the butcher block blanks. We'll talk about buying versus making and the cost of that in a bit. I wasn't going to film me cutting up the blanks because I thought that would be too simple. But it turned out to be a little more complicated and time consuming than expected. And here's why. This is a top down view of the kitchen cabinets without the countertop. I'm able to get eight foot long sections of butcher block that is the perfect width. If I take one section of butcher block and I cut this 45 degree angle on here, I can take this piece, flip it this way, and I have almost enough, except there's a little bit of exposed cabinet here. So that is not going to work. Plus, there's going to be a kitchen sink. That's going to be at a 45 degree angle, just like that. When I look online and there's a sink at a 45 degree angle in the corner, it's usually done in three pieces like this. And instead of a 45 degree cut, you have two 22 and a half degree cuts. So in order to do this, I need two eight foot long sections. On that first section, I'll cut a 22 and a half degree cut right here. And set that aside. This is going to go just like that. On the other piece, I will cut a 22 and a half degree section right here. And this is going to go like that. Unfortunately, this section is too wide to just use a single piece. So I'll need to glue up two sections. So I'll take both of the off cuts and combine them into one, just like this. Then I can cut a 22 and a half degree cut right there. And that will give me exactly what I'm looking for. We got our butcher block from LL Flooring, formerly called Lumber Liquidators. It was the cheapest we could find at $350. There is a place in town that sells A-grade maple butcher block for $750 each. That would have been the most beautiful option, but we would need two, and it's just not in the budget. Home Depot comes in cheaper at $504. So $350 from LL Flooring was the way to go, even though we knew it wouldn't be A-grade. For the most part, it was fine. The color of the maple was all over the place and had a few tiny voids that will need to be filled with epoxy. So the first thing I did was cut up the two boards that's going to make the corner piece. And then I'm going to glue them together and they don't need to be reinforced because it's all long grain to long grain. And the thought is, while the glue is drying, I can work on cutting those angles on the two end pieces. And again, those angles are 22 and a half degrees. So I'm using my digital protractor and a straight edge to draw out those lines. I'll be cutting everything out with the track saw because these boards are way too big as the table saw. And the track saw is just the easiest and simplest way to go. Like I mentioned before, I always have this guilt of buying instead of making. When I thought I was going to make the cabinets, I just felt overwhelmed and stressed. This would have taken me weeks on top of all the other stuff I have going on. This type of cabinet making just isn't fun for me. Once I decided to buy, I instantly felt better. My wallet didn't. This is one of those rare woodworking moments where it would have been cheaper. If you get into woodworking because you think you're going to save money, 
you'll be in for a shock. It's rarely the case, but this is one of those times where making would have been a lot cheaper. These cabinets were custom designed to our specs and space. I then thought about making the butcher block countertop myself, but this would have taken 50 board feet of maple, which is very close to the price of the butcher block countertop that we paid for. All the planing, cutting, and gluing, and replaning would have taken days. It'd be a huge mess with a lot of repetitive work. Lately, I have given myself permission to not build stuff I don't want to make, and I just feel better. I got rid of the guilt and shame, and this gives me more time to focus on the creative projects. I got into woodworking because it was fun. I want to keep it that way. Where the three sections meet up, they do need to be reinforced because it's all end grain to end grain. Typically, long grain glue ups are stronger than end grain. The easiest method I have available to me is using the Festool Domino. There are advantages of using the Domino over other joining methods. Number one is it makes zero mess. The mortising machine leaves zero dust. Plus, all the dominoes will add strength and they will help me line up the edges so the top will be perfectly flat. I had to get a little creative with my clamping technique because of the weird angles, but it turns out I don't really even need clamps. On the other joint, I didn't use any. One is I didn't have any clamps long enough, and two, the dominoes just held everything into place. After everything was assembled, I had to cut off the excess from that middle section glue up. I rounded over all the edges, filled some voids with epoxy, and now it's time to cut the hole for the sink. The butcher block is an inch and a half thick, which is probably the max for a jigsaw. But I just went nice and slow, and it cut through no problem. The cabinets got installed. We'll talk about them in a little bit. They look amazing. So I had to cut out a hole for the sink in the corner cabinet before attaching the countertop. And then the backsplash is also made out of some maple that I had on hand. This time I got to cut on the table saw, which I enjoy so much more than using a track saw. And it got the same round over and finish treatment as the countertop. I am an information junkie. This is my book collection. Most of them are woodworking books. I don't even want to think about how much money I've spent over the last 12 years collecting all of this information. This is a sponsored segment, but it is extremely relevant to what we're doing here today and can benefit you greatly. For $1.49, you can stream 
hundreds of videos a year from the Woodworkers Guild of America. And I'm gonna say that again, for $1, and 49 cents for your first year you can stream hundreds of well-produced videos by professional woodworkers these videos are made for all woodworkers no matter where you are on your woodworking journey whether you're just getting started or you've been doing this for decades you're definitely going to learn something everything is categorized so it's easy to find what you're looking for and new videos are being added all the time the main host george von Driska, has been a huge inspiration of mine for many years I know when I watch one of his videos, there's no fluff or filler, nothing but valuable information to make me a better woodworker. In fact, I've got one of George's books on the shelf right here. How crazy is that? They've got videos on making kitchen countertops and cabinets like we're doing today. There's something there for everyone. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link down below will get a full year premium membership to the Woodworkers Guild of America for only $1.49. Again, that link is down below. It is an incredible deal. Please check that out. All right, let's take a look at what we did. This is a huge life improvement. We have so much more room in the kitchen now that we brought all of our beverage making machines out here. And I don't feel any guilt for buying the cabinets and pre-made butcher block. To be honest, I probably couldn't even make these style of cabinets because of the orange glossy thing that's going on here, or at least not as well as we could have purchased. This just saved me weeks and weeks of time. Even though we didn't get the A grade countertop, it still looks perfectly fine. It is it looks really good in here. I actually like the contrast of the wood to the orange acrylic. Full disclosure, I did not install the cabinets. We had a guy come in, do all the electrical and the plumbing, and then actually install the cabinets on the floor and the wall. So thank you, Hunter. We consider ourselves coffee snobs, which is why we have the coffee maker that we do and the grinder that we do. We even installed a reverse osmosis system so we can get the most pure and fresh water for our coffee. I might be a bigger coffee snob than Peter McKinnon. I just don't talk about it as much as he does. Also, I could use your help with some cord management here. I'm not sure if there's a channel or something that we can make to hide everything. If you know of an elegant way of doing so, let me know. This is the same room where we made the shoe bench out of a big slab of hickory. We cut all our own veneers and we did this cool pattern that plays with the heartwood and sapwood. And I think it came out really good. I'll link to that video down below. What this countertop needs is a cutting board so we can cut fruits and stuff for our drinks. So I went and got some maple and mahogany and I started milling that up to make a beautiful and grain cutting board. And if you wanna watch that video, you're gonna to have to click on right here. All right, folks, that is gonna wrap it up. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something. Oh, I love it. Oh, life enhancement projects. Can you consider this a project? Is it a project if I didn't make it? Check it.